Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Overcoming Chronic Illness podcast. My name is Dr. Brian Reed, and I'm a naturopathic doctor. And today I am very excited to be joined by a fellow naturopathic colleague, um, also a chiropractic doctor, uh, two designations in the same person, uh, Dr. Jason West. Um, I'm particularly excited to chat with Dr. West today because about 10 or so years ago, um, my wife and I were at an ozone therapy conference uh, down in Texas, if memory serves, and Dr. West was one of the speakers there, and my wife and I were just blown away. It was it was a great conference. There were lots of great speakers, but um, Dr. West's um, talk kind of stood shoulders above you know the other uh, presentations that were given at the same time, and we um, were just really, really inspired by what he had to say. Uh, we were had been in practice for a few years ourselves at that point but it was very much uh like wow like dr west is just he's the man you know we, this is who we're kind of aspiring to try to be like um and so uh it, it's uh comes with a uh, great pleasure that i get to have a chat with him today I'm just really excited to pick his brain about uh all manner of topics related to complex chronic illness and i hope that you very much enjoy our chat uh just before i bring dr west into the into the uh, official interview. Uh, just a quick note, if you haven't already signed up for my uh, mailing list uh, for to be on my newsletter, uh, please consider doing so. The link for that is down in the show notes uh, or in the show notes for the show, or uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, it's in the uh, YouTube description below. Um, if you join my mailing list, um, you get to hear about the latest and greatest in my practice, uh, things that I'm you know excited about in practice. Um, if I have live Q&As coming up. Um, and I also post uh, links to all of the social media videos that I post um, throughout the week. But also, if you sign up for my mailing list, you do get access to the first two modules of my Overcoming Chronic Illness um, course um, for at, at no charge. Uh, first module is the introduction, which goes over kind of the whole um, outline of the course. And then module number two is all about mitochondrial dysfunction. Um, and within that module, it talks about a lot of the other uh, future module topics as well, like mold illness, chronic infections, heavy metals, detox pathway issues, histamine issues, et cetera, et cetera. So if you haven't already uh, had a chance to check that out or haven't had a chance to join my mailing list, please consider doing so. So I'm going to pause the recording here for two shakes, bring Dr. West in and be back in just a moment. All right, everyone. So I am back with Dr. West. Uh, Dr. West, thanks so much for joining me today for our chat. Um, and uh, if you don't mind just giving the listeners a quick overview or or, or not so quick, um, you have a very interesting <laughs> past, actually. I kind of enjoy hearing your bio and I've heard it a few times at different conferences. Uh, if you don't mind just letting uh, listeners know who, who you are and uh, just what you work with in practice, please. Well, thanks for having me, Brian. I'm honored to be on your uh, program and want to bring value not only to to you, but to the listeners and everything. And so if there's something to glean from this, I am a fourth generation um, alternative medicine practitioner in a little railroad town in Pocatell, Idaho. So we're in the Southeast corner and just like everybody else, you know, they have a fascinating story. My story is I thought I was going to go do a lot of manual manipulative therapy. My, my first education was as a chiropractor. My dad was a very gifted uh, chiropractor. And when I got into practice with him, it was a really big um, a wake up call because everybody wanted to see him and not see me. So I would go to work and then he was in the height of his practice and, and every once in a while, someone would get frustrated with waiting and he would say, go see my son. And I can remember vividly going to see him about three years into that practice and, and saying, dad, I, I think I made the wrong career decision. I don't think I should have be a doctor. I was working for United Parcel Service when I was going through school and, and I was on a track to kind of work my way up. And I thought maybe I should have just stayed in that pathway because I would listen to what my dad would tell patients. And then I swear I would tell them the same thing and they would be like, well, what do you think? Money grows on trees. Like, why would I listen to you <laughs> on that? And uh, my dad taught me a really important lesson. And he said, Jason, school teaches you to not be a menace to society. Like if the school teaches you not to hurt people. Uh, if you have someone comes in that has the characteristics of, you know, a heart attack or, or they having a, you know, a lung condition that you need to be aware, like you need to get them to the emergency room and, and we don't want to do any harm, but he said, it doesn't teach you how to be a healer and you've got to find what sets your soul on fire in healthcare. And when you find that, then the world changes. And so about that time, um, I ran into a, a mentor of mine, Dr. Taylor in Tulsa, Oklahoma, that was doing some vitamin infusion treatments and treating autoimmune and doing cancer support therapy. And I just, uh, wow, that's really, really fascinating. And I, so I started down that pathway 
and uh, and and had to get some a, a lot of additional schooling and and things to do that. But that's the pathway that I started, and and so that's kind of the the background is yes, I am a chiropractor. I have a naturopathic degree. I have an uh, Ornial Medicine Fellowship. I have a diplomate in nutrition. I'm part of the American Academy of Ozone Therapy, just like you are. And, uh, and my pathway is kind of, it went from treating really kind of sore backs and necks to now what it is, is it's just really complicated, complex healthcare conditions. And, uh, and then the goal is, is to try and balance everything out and, and to help them people to, to love themselves, love their pathway, find their energy, balance everything and, and change lives. And we do that in this beautiful little town in the Rocky Mountains. And that's kind of my story. Oh, I have to say this. Uh, I do have a son that has started on the same pathway, which has given me enormous um, fire and motivation to be able to help him, to be able to help people and to making sure that there's a legacy as well. And, and I, my dad experienced that and I'd show up at his office and, and he would, you know, fumble around with words and he was so excited to introduce me to patients and now I do the exact same thing. Like I've, I've turned into that super proud dad with, you know, dad goggles and everything else. But that's my, uh, my real quick story. That's fantastic. It's, it's a great story. And, and as I said, I've heard it a couple of times and I'm, I was captivated this time too. So yeah, that's, it's an awesome background. Um, it, just if you don't mind my asking, uh, your son's on the chiropractic track, the naturopathic medicine track, the something else track. So my son is in chiropractic school in Nash, uh, National University of Health Sciences in Florida. Mm -hmm. They do have a dual degree program. So he's doing his chiropractic program first, and then he goes through, um, you know, a C CNME uh, program to be a naturopathic physician. It's a basically a five and a half year track to get to both degrees. And, uh, and he really flirted a lot with the medical world and the medical pathway. And ironically, we were at an ozone conference meeting and he had been applying to different medical schools and osteopathic schools. And I was interested in, you know, I introduced him to Dr. Levy, the, or Levy, the vitamin C specialist and Dr. Schallenberger and, mm -hmm. and um, different people at the meeting last year. And they were saying, I don't think you want to do that pathway. You need to stay in your family root pathway and if you can pick up the, the naturopathic and chiropractic blend, uh, that's what you should do. And so that's what he's doing. So he's uh, um, in that dual degree pathway. Yeah. Amazing. That's great. I, I have dreams of one of my sons. Uh, I don't have any daughters, but uh, only sons. But uh, yeah, one of my sons following in my footsteps at some point, the 16-year-old's the pretty much dead set to definitely not become a healthcare provider. But I've got right. two more. So, you know, over three so far, but uh, or, or over one, I guess. But uh, we'll see how the little ones make out. But hopefully I'll be have, able to say the same type of thing uh, someday in the not too, too distant future. Well, Dr. Reed, I have five sons. That's my oldest. Um, and just to, to what you said, I have no daughters, uh, five boys. And... <laughs> There, every family has a black sheep. My second son uh, degreed, graduated degree in finance and, and runs an e-commerce company and he's mm -hmm. doing amazing mm -hmm. and he yeah, teases me about that. And then I have a couple other boys that so we'll see what happens to him. But, but right. I share that fatherly, like, I just, just like you, I just want them to be happy and in, in living their passion. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, that's number one for sure. Um, well, uh, just before we jump into the the um, interview questions here, um, just a general caveat, uh, nothing that we talk about today should be construed as medical advice. This is for informational purposes only. Uh, if you need medical advice and you're listening to this podcast or watching this, uh, please talk to your healthcare provider to get that advice. Um, so with, with that out of the way, um, I hope you don't mind the format. Um, I just really kind of want to pick your brain on a variety of topics related to complex chronic illness. So kind of keeping it a little bit open format and just we'll kind of see where it goes. Um, the first topic I'd love to pick your brain about, because I, I don't think I've heard you speak about this specifically. I follow you on social media as well. And I, I, I don't think I've specifically heard you kind of delve into this too much. So I'd love to hear your thoughts about um, mitochondrial health. Um, I'm a self-proclaimed uh, mitochondriac. I'm kind of obsessed with them now because just as a, as you would know, and I know um, more and more research coming out kind of indicating that mitochondrial dysfunction probably underlies a heck of a lot of the pathophysiology of a lot of the stuff that we see in practice. Um, so if you wouldn't mind just kind of speaking generally or in, in whatever in whatever way kind of floats your boat, like just about uh, how important mitochondrial health is uh, for your patients and what types of maybe therapies are helpful to support the mitochondria or lab tests used to assess them. If you don't mind just speaking about the mitochondria, that'd be wonderful. 
So I think that with uh, people, the number one reason why they get sick is because they run out of energy. And different people, when they run out of energy, get different conditions. So you can get arthritis, you can get muscle dysfunction or fibromyalgia, you can get chronic infections, you can get the activation of inadequate genes and, and go into that autoimmune pathway, you can get cancer, et cetera. So I think that the most important thing that we can do is we can make the cells to be healthy. And so I'm not going to be able to speak to the mitochondrial health at your level, but from my standpoint, what I would say is if your cells are healthy, then you're healthy. And, and this is one of the, my frustrations in healthcare is because at times I feel like you have to be a doctor to know which doctor to go see, you know, <laughs> if it's above the diaphragm, Oh, you're supposed to see, you know, an, an internal medicine specialist. If it's below the diaphragm, you're supposed to see a gastroenterologist. If it's a bone problem, you see an orthopedic surgeon. But if it's a nerve problem, you see a neurologist or a, a neurosurgeon. And then if it's a joint problem and not necessarily a bone problem, you don't see an orthopedic specialist. You see a rheumatologist. And and so there's a lot of confusion in that pathway. And, and honestly, one of my frustrations that I hear from patients, and I share this frustration, is when they're saying, you know, I have this, um, you know, elbow problem or I have this back problem. And I went to my orthopedic guy and he said, okay, let's do a cortisone shot or let's do the surgery. And, uh, and perhaps the patient decided to do the service. And then they're like, all right, well, you know, now my stomach's bothering me. And, and the orthopedic specialist is like, okay, well, I don't do that. You got to go see mm -hmm. this person. And so one of the things that I think is so important in chronic disease is you got to look at everybody as a whole. And it starts with the cells. And then the way that I say it is if you have enough energy, then you really don't get sick. And, and it all comes down to again, those powerhouses of the cell, the mitochondria, if those are healthy, then I think that you have the chance to not just live your life here, but you can live it up here. Mm. And, and then the, for me, I think the important part about that is just looking at the electron transport pathway. And if oxygen is the final electron acceptor, what happens is we have 36, you know, units of energy and the byproducts are carbon dioxide and water. If we don't have oxygen in the system as the electron acceptor, what happens is we basically create pyruvate and lactic acid. And then we have these waste products. And, and by the way, we're only generating, you know, four molecules of, of energy. And so that's where I start with about everybody. Now, I usually don't go into that much detail, but if we can create energy, then, then we can win and you can beat your disease. That, yeah, very well said. Um, in terms of, um, supporting a patient, like, so a patient walks into your office, they've got, you know, a myriad health issues going on. Um, and low energy is on the list, but as it is for almost all of my patients anyways, I'm sure it's not uh, dissimilar in your practice. Um, no, so you're thinking, sure. okay, we need to, you know, support that, um, you know, cellular function. Um, are there, hmm, this is kind of like the crux of, of medicine, basically <laughs> saying like, okay, so what do you do to, to support the cells? I, I guess maybe just from a more of like a mitochondrial perspective, like if you're wanting to support or, or like, um, energy pathway production function, are there certain, um, supplements, uh, other therapies, um, certain herbs, like what, what kind of things would you be, uh, thinking about to directly support the mi mitochondria or energy production pathways, assuming that there are, you've already got uh, pieces of the puzzle in place to say, treat the root cause factors that might be suppressing their cellular energy production. So they're on the anti-Lyme protocol or they're on the mold treatment protocol or the heavy metal detox or whatever it is. And it's like, okay, they're kind of, you know, trucking along on that protocol, but you want to try to jack up the energy production pathways a bit faster to get them, you know, give them a little more, get up and go, get them feeling better faster. Are there certain things you'd be thinking about to directly support their um, energy production pathways? Yeah. So I would say uh, doing the, um, you know, again, your normal intake and, uh, kind of a funny story that illustrates this is I was speaking at a small business employers conference uh, years ago. And my pitch was uh, to them is in the American healthcare system, we really subsidize an illness model. Like we go out and we get a blue cross or blue shield or United healthcare policy. 
and it covers sickness care. Like if you have a heart attack, it's going to, you know, cover it. If you, if, if, you know, God forbid, if you have a premature baby, they cover it. If we have a compound fracture and you need like, it's all covered. But if we ask someone, well, let's do some preventative therapy. So we don't have a heart problem. And let's do some preventative things so that the liver is cleaned out. Well, that we don't cover that. You know, that's that's mm-hmm. preventative medicine. And, and you know, I, I tell patients, we don't, you know, insurance doesn't pay for your toothbrush, but we kind of know it's really good to, have, to brush your teeth. Sure. And it doesn't mm-hmm. pay for gym membership, but it's important exercise and it doesn't pay for healthy food. So there's there's some, some stuff that we need to take uh, to do. And so when you do the patient intake, and I always ask them, um, you know, what is your most important priority? Well, we'll going back to my first um, statement of how to do the patient workup, I did the small group employers meeting. A, a kid came in, 27 different prescriptions. The employer was saying, look, he's costing more than all my other employees. Please do something. There were some experimental drugs and um, and, and a bunch of, th- not, not experimental, um, clinical trial drugs and some other things. And when he walked in, I said, what, what's, what's wrong? And he said, you know, I mutilate myself. And I thought, man, why did I open my big mouth and tell the employer that I could help this condition? Cause I'm not a psychologist and, mm-hmm. and this feels really out of my, my, my target zone. Mm-hmm. And I can remember thinking, I told the patient, I got to go ask my dad a question and I'll be right back. And I went down to the hall and I said, dad, what do I do with this patient? And he kind of chastised me a little bit and he says, well, you, you should be a doctor and you should figure it out. Like, why is he doing that? Like, that's what you need to focus on. And I went back and I asked him. Yeah, exactly. I asked the patient, okay, total desperation. And it's become such an important part of my workup thing, but total desperation. I said to him, all right, well, you know, walk me through a day of your life. Like, you know, what time are you going to bed? What time are you getting up? Um, and I, and I really felt like I was kind of trying to buy time when I was thinking of how do I manage a self mutilization case? Like he literally would take a knife and a razor blade and dig into his arms, trying to get worms out. Well, to make a long story short, he would, um, he didn't uh, feel like eating. And so he was drinking just tons and tons of Dr. Pepper. So he's getting, and when I say tons, like he told me an average day was six, six packs of Dr. Pepper. Wow. And, uh, and I think that he was so hopped up on sugar and caffeine and then they were giving him a sleep drug and, and an anxiolytic drug and, and a psychiatric and that it was kind of like putting him in that weird place between uh, sleep and being awake and he was hallucinating and, and he was digging out. Well, when he told me all of that, then I was like, okay, I have a pathway to help him. Like we need to work on getting him off of Dr. Pepper. We've got to figure out why, you know, what is the trigger for all of that? And, and we did, and we had this amazing, wonderful outcome. Well, ever since that's happened, I as part of our patient workup, I always ask him, hey, let's go through a normal day of your life. You know, what time do you go to bed? What time do you get up? What are you, when are you first eating? What is it? What are you eating for lunch? What are you eating for dinner? What are you drinking? And, and uh, trying to identify, okay, that's number one. And then um, to get energy into the cell. So long-winded answer to, to do that. To get energy in the cell, sometimes it's really... <laughs> really the simple is I tell people, let's get your body on a schedule. Some of my best miracle success stories are just reminding people, like, let's go to bed at the same time. Let's get up the same time. And then just like the Tin Man on the Wizard of Oz that always needed oil, let's make sure that you get enough water because I think water is such an important part of that energy pathway. It's like oil for the Tin Man and water is that for people. And then for specific mitochondrial function, I really love the mineral phosphorus um, mm-hmm. because it's part of that, you know, ATP pathway. Yeah. And, uh, and I, there's several companies that, that have it, but just kind of as my favorite one is there's a liquid uh, a phosphorus extract from standard process that I just think is one of the most amazing medicines. Mm-hmm. And so that's number one. I really like um, uh, making sure that you have a, lots of vitamin C because vitamin C do- donates electrons to the body. And so I like a liquid uh, liposomal vitamin C. I really like to make sure that we have niacin and NAD um, in that pathway for, again, mitochondrial function and the, and the Krebs cycle and electron transport chain. So phosphorus, so let me back up, body on a schedule, water, phosphorus, um, uh, NAD, vitamin C, and then the last one, is, well, the last in the mineral pathway 
would be magnesium. And, and just, I know you know this, but it's a cofactor for 300 enzymatic reactions in the body. And I just love, love, love um, uh, magnesium. And then the last part that I've just recently started incorporating is the oral peptide uh, program. And so peptides organize amino acids into proteins. And depending on the patient's uh, different condition, you know, there's a peptide for nerves, there's a peptide for uh, energy, there's a peptide for bones. And, and so I've added peptides in, into that process. And that's kind of how I start off with the mitochondrial or en energy thing. And just like you pointed out, nearly every patient, I mean, every once in a while, I'll have someone will tell me, I don't need any more energy. But for the most part, um, everybody's looking for energy. And, and, and that's the pathway that I start. Great. Um, I have a couple of follow-up questions to that, if you don't mind. Um, so uh, just the phosphorus like makes all the sense in the world where, you know, ATP, cellular energy for folks who don't know what that acronym stands for, adenosine triphosphate. So three, you know, phosphates, phosphates, you know, phosphorus with some oxygen um, atoms on top of that. Um, so with the phosphorus supplement uh, from standard process, or and I, as you said, there's others as well, but um, is it uh, just phosphorus that's in there? Or are there other components? No, just in that one, it's just straight up phosphorus. It's a okay. liquid thing. It doesn't taste very good. I have to warn people that like, I kind of feel like it tastes uh, kind of like a really um, sour, almost like a unsweetened orange juice. Mm -hmm. You put in water or fruit juice. And, uh, and so that's, I, I know there's other companies that have stuff and, and I, I don't know everything about other companies, but usually they're combined. Um, with, with other things. And I, I don't necessarily have a, a problem with that there. I mean, there's another a company um, I think it's called pro formulas that does an, an ATP energy supplement that mm -hmm. it's more of a combined herbal phytonutrient that has phosphorus as the main component. Mm -hmm. And then a, another company has something called ATP torch that is also a combination product. But I think anything that has phosphorus in it is a really good place to start with a lack of energy and, and mitochondrial dysfunction. Hmm. Yeah, no, that's, that's really interesting is it, again, it makes all the sense in the world. Just, I don't think I've heard anybody else talk about supplementing with phosphorus before. I feel like, um, the only context for, you know, like phosphorus is more like, oh, avoid things with high levels of phosphates, like sodas and things like that. And, um, yeah, that's, that's yeah, really interesting. Um, so with the phosphorus, um, generally speaking, like where I know say like vitamin C, if somebody takes too much, they're going to get loose bowel movements or same thing with magnesium. Like there's, you know, certain, uh, just known potential sides or, you know, you take niacin, if it's, you know, just regular old niacin, i.e. the flushing stuff, got to certainly watch out for the flush. Is there anything with phosphorus where it's like, Oh, you gotta, you know, watch out for this or that, or is it kind of like, um, say like, at taurine or certain other amino acids or, you know, niacinamide where like, it's, you pretty much never, it's pretty rare to see like a side effect from it per se, or is it generally pretty well tolerated? I, I think it's really well uh, tolerated. And, um, Dr. Ray, I need to take two second break. And the reason why is I've got this heater fan that's going on. Take your time. Yeah. Really no problem. Well. And, and let me just go turn it off so that we sure. have a better listening experience. Sure. I just got to walk over to the switch. Yeah. I'll just pause the recording. Um, and with the uh, liquid phosphorus, um, I'm just wondering, like the the dosing for that. Like, I know there's certain um, you know products out there where it's like, oh, trace minerals, or like say the um, oh my gosh, the uh, and I think it's on Ion Biome now, like the Zach Bush product, formerly I think formerly known as Restore, where it's like, oh, like some folks do great with that, but you look on the label and it's like, oh, just super super like teeny tiny doses, like just trace 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 amounts, yet somehow it has this therapeutic effect uh, versus say like you know a full blown like you know mineral complex, like just kind of night and day difference in terms of what's in the bottle, but you know, maybe different treatment effects as well with the phosphorus. Is this kind of like, a, um, you're actually replenishing with like appreciable milligram dosages, or is this more like on a kind of low dose, like, you know, trying to cellular level, um, address, uh, issues akin to like something like restore. I don't know if I can speak to the, you know, recommended daily allowance for, for phosphorus. Mm -hmm. I, I like if, if it was milligrams, um, I don't remember exactly what it is. Um, so I don't want to mislead anybody or, um, just from clinical experience, when we get, uh, elemental phosphorus into the, into the patients, I see really, really good outcomes. Now, I, I think you could also make the, the statement that just like, you know, B vitamins, 
you know, if you take just one B vitamin, it has a tendency to deplete your other B vitamins. And so that's why you, you take a complex. Mm. And I certainly wouldn't tell people just take phosphorus and nothing else. Mm -hmm. um, but I find that I, I like it kind of as a standalone. I mm -hmm. kind of like magnesium a little bit as a standalone. Now you can take phosphorus and you can take magnesium in the morning and lunch and dinner and everything uh, together. But I just love that, that single thing. And I think that the dosages that, that I'm usually recommending for patients are, um, are more than just a trace or, or more than, you know, kind of a, just a little blip on there. Like they're pretty, pretty significant. It's the same way that I feel with, with vitamin C. Like I, I'm just, I have a love affair with vitamin C mm -hmm. and I like to give, you know, very strong, significant doses. I like to get people, you know, five to 10,000 milligrams a day that if you do it as a liquid, I don't see any, any bowel problems. And so certainly if anybody's listening, like don't constitute that as medical advice. Like I'm just using that, that, that as example. Also, you know, in IV things it, it, to get, by 50, 60 times an uh, RDA levels in type of uh, inside of an IV, like I think you get really good outcomes with that. And so I see the, the, the argument on both sides of saying, look, we want to combine stuff and we want to have a synergistic. We also want to have a targeted therapeutic. And, uh, and this is part of that wonderful, you know, dilemma of medical practice. Like not everybody responds the same and you can't just do a one size fits all everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Life would be so much easier and we probably wouldn't have jobs because it'd just be medicine would be so easy. You know, just be right. robots would be doing it or something by now. But um, with the vitamin C where you just mentioned uh, something about a liquid vitamin C, um, are you typically using like a liquid liposomal vitamin C or is it just like plain old ascorbic acid or what's your, what's your go-to? Well, I, I do really like the liquid liposomal vitamin C. That's mm -hmm. my favorite. Um, right. And I, I think it works really well. I have seen a literally no, no, bowel problems with liquid vitamin C. Matter of fact, as a, as a fascinating thing, I had a, a patient with a severe autoimmune rheumatoid arthritis that uh, I was saying, look, we need to take uh, liquid vitamin C. And, and I said, take liquid vitamin C until you feel like your bowels, you know, getting loose, you get the classic diarrhea. Mm -hmm. And I think she didn't say this to me, but I think what she said was, okay, Dr. West challenge accepted. And, uh, <laughs> and she uh -oh. took a liquid vitamin C every single day for a month, the mm -hmm. entire bottle. And, and I don't wow. remember exactly how much was in it. Uh, it didn't cause liquid pro or excuse me, diarrhea problems or loose mm -hmm. bowels. And it significantly helped her. Wow. And like it, like massive help more, more. It was just so surprising to me. And so I feel really comfortable in telling people, look, you, you take as much as, as, as you can handle, right. especially in an acute flare up. And I don't see any problems with that. Yeah, that's, that's great. Um, and I've never personally seen issues with um, higher dose vitamin C, like the occasional patient, if they're taking something non-buffered, they might get some stomach irritation or reflux or something like that. But um, outside of like loose bowel movements so with regular vitamin C, I really haven't seen any issues. Um, however, I'm just wondering your thoughts on the following, um, you know, a couple of the mentors that I've learned from in other, you know, um, media before, um, they've talked about how there's really this kind of like balance that needs to be struck with, you know, vitamin C, glutathione, vitamin E, they're kind of like this trifecta of, you know, antioxidant uh, regulating goodness in the body. Of course, there's other antioxidants as well, but I've just heard others talk about how like you want to make sure you don't overemphasize one antioxidant type over others, um, lest you maybe lead to a depletion akin to what you said about B vitamins earlier. Um, again, I haven't seen that as an issue in practice, but I'm just wondering if you have any thoughts about that, or if you've seen any issues with like, oh, we've been riding the vitamin C a little too hard and eventually you need to bring in some other antioxidants to balance it out in some way, shape or form. I do think you have to have a balance. Hmm. And so, uh, uh, just a fascinating story is, um, my introduction to uh, the miracle vitamin vitamin C happened in 2005. My father got really, really sick. We couldn't figure out why now kind of doing the Sherlock Holmes detective pathway afterwards, we recognized that he had a crown over a mercury post or mercury filling. He bit down into Walnut, the, the crown cracked and he got some um, mercury inside of his GI system. And what happened is his liver enzymes went off the chart. He started getting like literally like psoriasis plaques on his elbows and his eyes swelled shut and, and his liver enzymes 
you know, just went 50, 60 um, times higher than normal. And the doctors were saying, okay, he's got liver cancer. He's got pancreatic cancer. And they would do, a, you know, a CT scan and they would do an MRI and we're doing ultrasounds and, and, and it's not looking, we can't find anything other than he feels like he's in, in the grave. And then second thing, you know, liver enzymes are off the chart. Mm-hmm. Well, Dr. Taylor tells me, you know, Jason, your dad has, um, scurvy and i'm like wait a minute you know scurvy was solved hundreds of years ago <laughs> dr james lynn that said you know these sailors that are doing salt tack and and pork and they're they're you know not getting any raw foods and and they're dying from it so he got really high dose uh, vitamin c levels and uh and it literally went from one foot in the grave to better health this is what started my pathway into integrative functional blended medicine, vitamin infusions, ozone, oxidative medicine, dilute hydrogen peroxide. Like that's the pathway that got me into that. Well, um, I was at a conference that uh, Dr. Levy was giving a, he's the godfather of, uh, you know, really the big guy for vitamin C. Mm -hmm. And he tells me that Dr. Klenner, who was this amazing physician in South Carolina that, that really kind of developed the IV vitamin C protocols and stuff like that. It was his understanding that um, he was giving straight vitamin C. And so I, Dr. Klenner told me that, and I thought, well, excuse me, Dr. Levy told me that that's what Dr. Klenner thought. And I thought, okay, well, these are two of the, the people that I really look up to in, in, in the medical uh, in vitamin C world, and I'm going to go back and do that. And I want to say this was about... 2012 or 13. And, and I do a lot of infusions every day. Um, in my office, we usually are routinely doing 25 or 30 infusions every day. Wow. And I decided, all right, I'm not going to blend it with anything. I'm just going to give them straight vitamin C. I'm going to take sterile water. I'm going to mix it with vitamin C at the appropriate, you know, milligram desired dosages. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to do anything else because I want to follow what Dr. Klenner, you know, the original vitamin C pioneer did. Mm-hmm. And I did not have that very good of outcomes. Matter of fact, I can remember walking down the hall and I almost felt like I was in a mass unit and people were cramping and they were hurting. And, oh, no. and, uh, and as I was walking down the hall, I kind of got this thought, thought that, you know, this is, I, I need to combine stuff. And, and so I think it's essential when you're using a, any products that you have to use other things. Like, I don't think vitamin C just in itself, it will get you as good of clinical outcomes when you have vitamin B6 with it, that helps to recirculate vitamin C. And then we add, you know, the, the calcium, I think it's essential to have calcium in vitamin C. I think it's important to have magnesium. I really think it's important to have potassium. And so I would answer your question about, do we combine vitamin C with glutathione and vitamin E? And I think, yes, I, th- I think that that's really, really important. Now that doesn't mean that everybody gets the exact same because we're all as biologically different as our fingerprints. And so you might need, you know, vitamin C and magnesium and alpha lipoic acid and and acetylcysteine and and nitrous oxide healing factor. And then Jason might need vitamin C and a B complex and an organic trace mineral program and a phytonutrient and ashwagandha. And so this is where um, I think medicine has to go. It has to go to personalized medicine. Mm-hmm. And I think one of the problems there that people that you and I work with consistently is they'll go to their doctor and because of the enormous pharmaceutical influence, that it's the same dosage for the same condition, whether you are, you know, 120 pounds or 150 pounds or 180 pounds and you're male or female, like it seems like, oh, well, you just get X milligram dosage and, and you can't treat people like cookbooks. Like Mm -hmm. it doesn't work. You have to be like, Hey, there's a person in front of me. I got to treat the person. Yeah. hundred percent. Um, just a kind of a follow up question to that, uh, or one of the second last things that you said. Um, so, you know, in terms of the individualized approach, um, when it comes to deciding, you know, does someone need glutathione or not? Do they need alpha lipoic acid or not? Do they need vitamin C or not? Um, are you largely making those decisions about, uh, you know, nutrients or nutraceuticals that they might need based on what's making sense clinically at the time, based on their, you know, symptoms they're presenting with or other observations you made about this or that that's impacted their health one way or the other, like, so more of a clinical decision um, based on symptoms, signs, et cetera, or are you um, doing 
lab profiles? Like, are you doing nutrient like blood profiles or whatnot on folks to try to figure out what they need? Like, how do you decide if they need to add some glutathione in with their vitamin C? Um, okay. So two things about that. One is you want to do the best, most thorough workup that you can. So obviously, you know, most of it is patient history. Um, I love uh, lab tests and I love imaging. And, and so, you know, we routinely run, you know, a complete blood cell count, a metabolic panel, or looking at a lipid panel, a T3, T4, a TSH, an LDH, a total iron, um, a phosphorus pad. Like I, I do all of that. I also do some, you know, tissue mineral assays where we're looking at the, uh, you know, the hair for heavy metal toxicities. In my office, we also do a medical microscopy evaluation where we take a little blood out, we put it on the slide. It's a part of our research project. It's not an accepted, um, you know, medical evaluation. It's just really important part of what we're doing. Mm -hmm. I also like doing what's a, a QMR test and a CYRA test, which are energy profiles based upon the energy points on your hands. And then I take all of that information and then I hope that everybody will give me space to say this. And what I mean by that is when I came into practice with my dad and I have, my dad was such a huge part of my life. He practiced for 51 years. He passed away in 2011 and, um, and I have sun goggles on him. So to me, he can, he can do no wrong. And we'd walk in the office and he would say, oh, well, Brian needs vitamin C and boron and Jason needs vitamin C and zinc and, and Maxine needs vitamin C and B6. And like, he would, he would kind of go through these things. And I would say to him, Hey dad, how do you do that? Like, where's the research or where, why would you give that person, you know, that protocol and this person, this protocol. And, and he told me this, and then I'm going to answer your question as best I can. Mm -hmm. He said, Jason, anybody can be a doctor. Like if you have the grit and determination to sit in a classroom for, you know, eight to 12 years and do all of it, like you can make it. And he said, but that's not what is a healer. And he said, healers listen to hear. And he said, so I'm listening to that clinical intuition that tells me that when he told me that I was really frustrated. I'm like, Oh dad, well, that's not science. Like, and he said, yes, but look at the outcomes that I'm getting. And so when you ask me, Jason, how do you decide whether you have vitamin C and electrons and, or excuse me, vitamin C and glutathione, vitamin C and vitamin E, or, you know, a totally different, you know, homeopathic or an herbal pathway. The best way I know how to answer that is to say, I do the best workup that I can. I get all of the lab work. I get the, the energy work. I listen to the patient. I go back to my clinical experience reservoir and then ultimately how I make that decision is I listen to here. Hmm. And, and when I feel that, like, when I do that, I feel that I get really good outcomes. But sometimes I can almost reference a study of saying, oh, well, you combine, you know, glutathione with, you know, a, a electron scavenger, or we're missing it with cruciferous vegetables as a hormone scavenger, or we're using, you know, NAC or SAMI or whatever it is. Um, and I feel that when we do that, I call it uh, intuition medicine, that that I really serve my patient the best. And I also want to tell the patient, look, I'm humble enough that if you come up with a good idea or you ask me about a study or if I come up with something new, like I want to incorporate that. And I never want to let my ego get in the middle of making a good clinical decision. But that's how I make decisions is I try and listen to you. Yeah, that's a great answer. And uh, some of the smartest docs I've talked to have said things akin to that. And the folks that I tr have historically aspired to be like, that's oftentimes what they'll say if I have the chance to pick their brain. So yeah, that's that's great. Um, yeah, and what your dad said uh, once upon a time, like, yeah, so so true. Like, you know, anybody, not anybody, but many people can become a doctor. We had a healer, so it's a different, different category. So yeah, that's very, very well said. Thank you for that. Um, I'm I'm looking at the clock and my list of questions and realizing that I've really just talked to you about like the first topic of about a dozen here. So I'm recognize I'm going to have to uh to make make some tough decisions here in terms of what to ask you about next. Um, so um just because I'd like to kind of talk about uh, what what you're the most interested to chat about as well, uh, Doctor West. Uh, I, have a, I have a few other topics. I have kind of some general like rapid fire questions I like to ask you, um, as well. But maybe just for the next few minutes, um, uh. 
topics I have coming up here, um, histamine, mold, chronic infections, heavy metals. Um, do any of those kind of jump out as like, yeah, that sounds like the most fun thing to talk about right now or. Uh, well, they're all, they're all would be fun to talk about. They're also and, fun. Yeah. Yes. It's so, like picking so, your favorite child. So it's tough. Exactly. And um, so what I would say on that list of questions that you have is I think the most important one is chronic infections and, and then, then heavy metals. And then of course, you know, mold. And, and I don't remember the the fourth one, there was four of them. Histamine. But, yes. Histamine. Okay. So what I really think happened. So I, I read a, a journal article, the British Journal of Medical Practitioners. Um, I think it's a 2009 study that says that chronic infections, usually, you know, bacterial or viral, um, a big component is Lyme, uh, but also mycoplasma, herpes simplex one, uh, Epstein-Barr cause, when you have chronic infections, they cause neural behavior, neurodegenerative, psychiatric, autoimmune, and fatiguing illness. And so when we do a workup, like that's always kind of my, my central thing is, is the immune system. And you'll see this on a blood test where, well, you'll, you'll run a number and your white blood cell count. I kind of like to see those numbers between, you know, six and 8,000 is, is what I'd like to see. And then you look at the percentage of, you know, neutrophils that fight bacteria, lymphocytes that fight viruses, monocytes that are kind of your inflammatory, your garbage collector, eosinophils are, you know, basically parasites and allergies and basophils are histamine. So that, what the ratio is, it should be 60, 30, 8, 3, 0, never let my engine blow. That's kind of the mnemonic that I had for that. So you look at a blood test and a lot of times people will have either a normal white blood cell count or they'll have a low white blood cell count. It'll be, you know, 3.5 or 4. And then the lymphocyte count, instead of being 30, it's going to be like 40, 45 and stuff. And so what that means to me is that there's a chronic infection going on. That, that would be a viral component. And the body's accepted it as being normal. And so we have this, the nervous system is saying, you know, your brain is saying, I want to live up here. And then we have this chronic infection that's, they're not like having a fever. They're not in the hospital. They're not throwing up. They don't have flu-like symptoms but it's been happening for so long that the nervous system thinks it's normal to have this chronic infection. And so I tell people, okay, there's this thing called nerve memory. If you walk into your house and your mom or your wife or someone is making your favorite meal, as soon as you walk in, you're like, oh, that smells great. I'm so happy. Like it's, you know, whatever your favorite meal is. And then about, you know, three, four minutes later, your body doesn't even process anymore. It takes that stimuli and then it, it doesn't think that we need to classify it anymore. And then you forget and you take, oh, I got to take the garbage out or I forgot something in the car. You go outside and you come back in. You're like, oh, this smells so great. Well, the same thing can happen with chronic infection. Your body can get a nerve and memory that thinks it, it's normal to be less than ideal. And, and, and by the way, it's, it's not just chronic infection. You can have a phantom limb syndrome where you can get, you know, rope caught around your finger if you're out practicing roping and then the cow takes off and pulls your finger off or you can have phantom gallbladder syndrome or, or phantom limb syndrome. That's part of that nerve memory pathway, but it happens to the immune system as well. And so what happens is I think that that's the number one place to start with chronic disease and stuff. We've got to figure out, is there something there? And sometimes not a virus, sometimes it's mycoplasma. A lot of times it's Lyme disease. And then where the heavy metal component comes into that is heavy metal does to your body what kryptonite does to Superman. Like it makes it so that it doesn't function. And there's no such thing as a healthy mercury level or a healthy lead level, but we live in 2023 and it's in our environment and it's accidentally in our food supply and our water. And, and sometimes it affects people at different levels. Like it's always fascinating when spouses you know, living in the same environment and one spouse is exposed to everything and it doesn't affect him at all. And the other spouse is like, oh man, it does this to me. And if I deviate at all from my schedule or my diet, I have this, this problem. And then of course, mold is in that chronic infection pathway. And then histamine is the, the response of the body where we have, you know, hist you know mast cell problems and everything else. And so I kind of think you could almost put all of those in together that if you fix the immune system, which is, again, you want to work on getting a stimulation to that. 
and when people have autoimmune and they hear me say that, they're like, well, I don't want to stimulate my immune system. It's already overactive. And my response is, well, over the last 23 years, when people come in with rheumatoid arthritis or MS, Trogan's disease, ankylosing spondylitis, autoimmune hepatitis, when we upregulate their immune system, they get better. Matter of fact, I kind of challenge that whole autoimmune pathway. Uh, yes, it's a dysfunctional immune system, but it's not a hyperactive. It's just mm -hmm. kind of tricked. So I know I know I threw a lot of out, out there, but really, um, if you go to the immune system, you treat everybody individual. Don't forget about the two most important you know, organs for the immune system that they always forget out in the, about medicine, and that's your thymus gland, and that's your spleen. That in medicine, they literally don't exist. I think you've got a really nice way to help people. Um, what are the um, some of the things, uh, tools that you like to use to help support the immune system or, or boost up the immune system? So um, first of all is telling people, please be careful with refined sugar and, uh, and, and food chemicals and additives. So white sugar has this detrimental effect on what's called your phagocytic index, Phagocytic index means that your white blood cells that circulate through your body literally have a capacity of to get about 16 foreign invaders or antigens or bad guys before it turns into a pus cell and dies. About two hours after ingesting two teaspoons of uh, white sugar, that phagocytic index goes from 16 to 4. So literally, the, I mean, and sugar's great. I like sugar. Everybody else likes sugar. It's just horrible for you and it hammers your immune system. So that's thing number one is just be really careful of sugar and high fructose corn syrup. Then the next things are, I love glandular uh, products for the thymus and spleen. Um, I think it's really important to drain your lymph nodes. And there was a, a study by Bert, Dr. Burr Ferguson in the 1930s. It was published in the Townsend Newsletter that talks about the importance of draining your lymph nodes. And with chronic infection, what happens is you have a hydrogen ion content buildup in your lymph nodes that I think acts like Velcro. It just like makes everything stick in those lymph nodes. And your lymph nodes are your infectious processing centers. And he discovered that by giving potassium and dilute hydrochloric acid, either orally or in an IV thing, it would change the hydrogen ion content of the lymph nodes and they would drain. So that's, I think, work on your thymus, work on your spleen, your eating habits, use oral potassium and oral hydrochloric acid helps to drain it. You can accelerate that process by, I follow up almost every single vitamin C or ozone infusion or ultra vital hemotherapy chelation with a hydrochloric acid potassium infusion because it changes those lymph nodes. And then, yeah, that, that, that's good. But I have one other thought, but I want to make sure that I'll save that for my ending thoughts. I want to see if we can get through your questions, but, but if you, if again, go back to the basics, support things that are out of balance, work on your energy levels, decrease uh, foods that have sugar and, and uh, high fructose corn syrup and, and uh, dyes. And I think we've got a nice recipe to, to start putting everybody back together. Sounds like a good recipe to me. Um, just so I know we have about 10 minutes or so left, Dr. West. Uh, maybe if you want to share that thought and uh, then we'll, we'll see how we're doing for time. And if I can squeeze anything else in, that's great. Otherwise, I'm, I'm already a very happy customer. So uh, please uh, fire away if you don't mind. So Dr. Ray, what I would say is the, the component that I was going to add on the statement is I used to think that every healthcare condition was related to biochemistry, biomechanics, you know, uh, hormone imbalances. Like I thought everything was like science and structural and it is like, there's a, such an important component about it. But what I wanted to say in that also is I'm starting to recognize and be more aware that energy is a huge component uh, of health. And, and because you can't really cut out energy and put it on a microscope or you can't take an x-ray of it or MRI of it, like it has a tendency to be really, really neglected in a traditional Western medicine allopathic approach. And as the further I progress through school in, in the school of hard knocks and the school of working with people, I'm recognizing the energy is like such an important part of, of health. And what I mean by energy is it's, it's literally how you feel about yourself, how you talk to yourself. You know, can you forgive yourself? Can you forgive others? And I consider myself a really, really spiritual person. Like I'm, I pray all the time in my office for patients and for myself. 
and I, and it's not re- a religion or sect based. Like I just want to be open to inspiration and I want people to feel that way too. And, and the further that I go through the thing, I just wanted to tell people a lot of times we get sickness from, from fear and worry and doubt and, and from programming from, you know, social media and, and, and telling people that we have this comparison syndrome. And so one of the th- important parts of my workup is I tell people, do you want to know how to be really sick and to be really unhappy? And, and it, yeah, it's kind of a trick question because of course no one wants to be sick and no one wants to be unhappy. Mm-hmm. And I ask that question because I tell people, if you know how to be unhappy and if you reverse engineer, if you just do the opposite, then, then you have the components for the recipe. So I tell people when you're not feeling well, really well, I really want you to add an energy component of telling yourself, look, I like myself. I like my pathway and it, and, and I, so many times people have like, they don't like themselves and, and I've struggled with personally, like, so I'm not like, like I've had some issues with, you know, am I good enough? Am I going to make it? Am I good enough to university? Oh, if I just had, you know, out of school, I'd be happier. If I just had a bigger office, I'd be happier. If I just had more patience, I would be happier. If I just, just, uh, and I'm figuring out that Buddha and Hippocrates and Paracelsus, they, they were trying to figure it out too. Like some of the stuff that you read, you're like, I could apply that right now. Like it wasn't from 2000 years ago, but that energy pathway where I tell people, look, we've got to take a look inside and, and avoid how to be unhappy, which is comparison syndrome. And that's such an important, like, oh, I should be as successful as this person, or look at that, you know, perfect life that they have on fake book, um, or they have, you know, on the, on this pathway. And if, and if you recognize like, like whatever Supreme being that lines up for you, that, that you believe in, like there, I believe that there's a plan for that. And when you look at other people, my, my son just told me this the other day about one of his friends, he's like, dad, you know, I just want to be like this person because they have the perfect life. And I said to him, well, what that statement means to me is, is you don't know them very well because there's something over there. Like everybody has challenges. No one gets like this automatic, amazing uh, pathway in life. We all have struggles and, and challenges. And we have a tendency to compare ourselves to people's very best that we see and, and our very worst and then we create all of this energy and, and unhappiness based upon that comparison, which isn't even reasonable. And, and, and I get sometimes I get caught up in this and, and I know we're on a social media system, but one of the things that I tell people is like, you're kind of happier when you, when you're not on social media, you know, when you don't, when you're not, and it's not that it's not that we don't want to see our friends and our family and get education and stuff like that. But when we get in that negative energy pathway, of saying, oh, I should be this, or I should be that, instead of, I want to live my pathway, and my pathway is for me, and I have space, like, I, I want to celebrate other people's successes, and stuff like that, and I want to help them when, the, when they're feeling down, but I don't want to compare myself to, for here to, to what I should be, and, and I think that's such an important element of health that gets overlooked and not recognized that yes, it's biomechanics, it's biochemistry. And we want to do a history and we want to do our blood workup and everything else. We also want to make sure that, that we put our arms around that energy pathway and, and that we, if we look inside and love ourselves, now we also have, we haven't, it's something that can accelerate our healing. And, and, uh, and I, anyway, I, so it's an important part of our workup. I tell people as much as possible, like don't do comparison syndrome and you just be you. Don't try and be someone else. Yeah, that's that's awesome, and and I, I really hope our listeners um, take that to heart. Um, I'd say about half of my guests, and I've been very fortunate to have some really fantastic guests, very wise folks on. I'd say probably about half of them now have said something in that similar vein. You know, and, and paraphrasing here, you put it very eloquently. I'll try to paraphrase slightly here. Um, you know, it's like yeah, there's absolutely like organic factors, you know, biological factors behind why folks are dealing with their complex chronic illnesses. Um, But at the end of the day, in addition to the supplements and ozone therapy and all the different fun, fantastic things we do, um, there is this, you know, non- physical part of things as well. And, and yeah, I think it's, I I fully agree. I think it's super important um, to, to be addressing that too. And I, I 
really appreciate hearing that message, um, especially from a mentor um, like yourself, Dr. West, because it's something where it's so easy as a clinician to kind of get more wrapped up in the like, yeah, like we're treating the mold and this and that, and we're you know chasing the you know mitochondrial dysfunction and this and that. But um, yeah, just kind of remembering those core principles. I know it's been very important in my own life uh, for my own growth and healing and all of that. And um, yeah, I think it's I think it's really very very valuable advice. And um, also just as a as kind of an aside note, um, I think it's fantastic that you pray for your patients. Um, and I um, myself uh, in a non-denominational, you know, not affiliated with any particular religion type of way, like I, I do the same thing as well. And I think it's just a really beautiful thing to do for our patients because we we still want them to be well. And I think that's just a really commendable thing. So thanks for sharing that with us. Um, Dr. West, I could probably pick your brain for about two days. Um, so I know we didn't even scratch the surface on what I was hoping we, uh, well, oh, we didn't even scratch the surface on the mountain of questions, but I'm, I really appreciate your, your very valuable time. Thank you so much for your insight with everything. Um, uh, just before we part ways with our interview today, um, could you just share with listeners if they, you know, want to work with you? Like if they say, oh my gosh, like Dr. West is this brilliant doc. I'd really like for him to help me with my case. Um, and they don't happen to live in beautiful, um, South Eastern Idaho, Southeastern. Yes. 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 Um, so, um, uh, how can, can folks work with you, uh, from long distance in some way, shape or form? And are there any, uh, could you speak to your, uh, where you at, where you are at on social media for like the little tiny bit of social media that maybe be folks can have in their life and get some goodness there, uh, or any other like online offerings or whatnot that they have, would you be able to speak to that please? Well, they say the, it in business that the most clear that you can be, you get, you know, an action response. If you give mm -hmm. people multiple action steps and now I feel like I got to violate that a little bit. So, um, <laughs> the first thing is, is information about our clinic is westcliniconline.com. And, uh, we got a, a ton of information over there on that. I have written an Amazon bestselling book called hidden secrets to curing your chronic disease that is available. We've just coming out with a new book called why we get sick and what to do about it. It's available in an ebook format as a free download and as a link to our social media platforms. And so our clinic website is West clinic online. I do have, um, a YouTube channel, uh, called healthy healing TV that, uh, we put stuff out consistently on. I have a national radio show called America's healer. And if you want to get the ebook, you just go to America's healer.com and you can get our free ebook called why we get sick and what to do about it. Fantastic. Thank you. I'm trying to type one handed. I really need to get a better, better setup here. Um, for, uh, putting it in my microphone. Uh, I'll put the links to all of those offerings in the show notes. Um, or if you're watching this on YouTube, they'll be in the description um, below the video. Um, thank you so much again, Dr. West, for your time today. It was a really fantastic chat. And I, I hope at some point we'll be able to connect again um, at a, uh, uh, for a future interview. Yes, for sure. Awesome. Thank you. And uh, thanks so much, everyone, for listening. Uh, this concludes another episode of the Overcoming Chronic Illness podcast. Uh, hope that you folks enjoyed the episode and uh, please stay tuned for the next one.